All right, so I went from being a street performer in Waikiki to becoming a police officer, going undercover to catch and arrest other street performers in the same place I used to perform. Here's what happened. What's up everybody, Doug here, Believing the Dream. Story time. Let's go all the way back to November of 2007. My wife and I had been married for just over a year. We had already lived in Fairbanks, Alaska for six months and we were looking to travel one more time before we started having kids. We picked Honolulu, Hawaii. My wife was a nurse, so she got a job, uh, what we call an agency job or a travel assignment in Honolulu at Straub Hospital. So we flew out there late November so we could find our apartment and we could you know, learn our way around. It was just me, her, and our puppy. And we lived in a hotel slash condo, which was right on Kapahulu. It's a Waikiki Grand. We're right across from the zoo, just one building north of Kalakaua. So a block off the beach. And so we had just moved in. We dropped off our stuff and we said, let's go walk down the strip, as we called it, which was Kalakaua. All we knew is we drove, down, we drove through Kalakaua when we came from the airport with the taxi. I saw what I thought was a cipher of b-boys dancing out in front of one of the stores. So as soon as we dropped our stuff off, I said, babe, let's go. So we walked down the street and sure enough, we come across these b-boys and they were dancing and basically doing a show, taking money. Um, they're doing a bunch of blow ups and tricks. That's what we call them. They're basically the things that get the crowd to clap. And um, it was just a lot of fun. I'd never met these dudes before. I literally had only been in Hawaii for a few minutes. They were the first dancers that I saw. And it was important for me to try to hook up with B-Boys. I had met up with the Alaskan B-Boys and we used to session up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. So it was important to me to hook up with some B-Boys in Hawaii so I can continue to session and practice. And so right when I got there, they were the first ones I saw. So we went to go check them out. As soon as we get there, I had my fresh brand new shoes on. I just bought from the bodega in Boston, which is any sneakerheads know about the bodega in Boston. It's a legendary store for sneakers. So I was wearing those at the time. And while I'm standing there, the B-Boys are doing a show and no joke, one of the dancers comes up to me and he goes, you gonna dance or what? And I noticed he was looking down at my shoes. So he must have been able to tell that I was a B-Boy or at least a sneakerhead. And maybe by the way I was moving or whatever, he knew I was a B-Boy. He just kind of read my hand, he knew that I was a dancer. So I was like, I said, yeah. He goes, you're not gonna dance in those though, right? And he looks down at my sneakers. He goes, you got some shoes you can dance in? And I said, yeah, back at the hotel. So like five minutes away. He said, go get them. I said, cool. So right then I walked away with my wife and was gonna go back to the hotel. I found this video, check it out. Yo, okay, we just ran into some B-boys on a Kalakaua. Ugh, Kalakaua. Downtown Waikiki. Wait, what was that? Downtown Waikiki? From, um, I forget what he said. I forget what he said, but. Anyway, they session Monday through Thursday, 8 to 11, at the white, at the 24 hour fitness Waikiki. So I might be able to get in without a membership. <laughs> Boo. Nothing's free in Waikiki. Just a session with them. But they were doing a street show. So I'm about to go back to the apartment. We're gonna let the dog out. I'm gonna grab some kicks. And maybe go session with them, vibe out. Basically, I went back to the hotel, grabbed my kicks, rushed back as fast as I could. And these dudes actually let me do sets with them during the show. And then, no joke, straight up paid me. Cause you know, there was like maybe five or six of us. Actually, here's the picture. They split the money with me. I don't know how much it made, but it was like three or $400. And I remember leaving that day with like 60 bucks in cash my first day just from doing a street show in Waikiki. And actually, those of you who spend any time in Waikiki, you may know some of these people because I'm pretty sure the drummer still gets down in Waikiki. I see him every once in a while. He's got dreads now. I don't know if I've seen him drumming, but I definitely see him around there. I think years later, ran into him when I was a police officer, years later, and told him the story and he remembered me, but I haven't seen him since then. But anyway, good dudes, man. Uh, we ended up hooking up with them. 
they took us to UH. I guess the B-Words used to session at UH in one of the gyms. I went over there to dance. I don't know if there's a dance studio or what, but I remember there was a mirror, so it must have been a dance studio. And we would session. They were there every week. I didn't get a chance to go every week. I didn't know anybody in Hawaii. And even though most of the people in here are not from Hawaii, I think only one or two people were from Hawaii. One dude was from Hawaii, but he lived in Vegas. But uh, then there's those two boys that are from France. And really, they were really good. And we used to go to Kapilani Beach and session and practice our flips and tumbles and stuff. And then um, on Christmas Day, a month later, we took them out to eat. And we didn't know anybody. And they didn't know anybody. And we just wanted to have like Christmas dinner. So we went out to eat and we bought them dinner and just hung out. I remember they got me a gift. But I don't remember what that gift was. It was cool because we just connected and they were the first people we really knew from Hawaii. And I know they didn't have any people there. These dudes were living in hostels. Like they would go stay in the hostels down Lemon, like one block north of Kalakaua behind, there's like that little street right there. There's a bunch of hostels and they would just rent rooms for the night for however much. It was kind of cool to just kick it with them and whatever. So it, it brought me back. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is because we were doing street shows for money. And essentially that's peddling. And in Waikiki, what they call they call that peddling. And the reason why I know that is because as a police officer, we would get a lot of complaints in District 6, which is the Waikiki district, about peddling. And it's kind of a manini, like it's kind of a um, petty crime, right? It's not hurting anybody. For the most part, there's no danger involved. Sometimes the crowds get really big and people get forced to walk around the sidewalk onto the street. And everybody who's been to Hawaii knows that Kalakaua is crazy with traffic and people get hit all the time. So the only danger would be like the jaywalking or the people that have to go out into the street because people are watching the show. But for the most part, so that we didn't get kicked out, we always had one dude who was in charge of keeping that crowd small, moving people around so that they weren't blocking egress so that people could get around. For the most part, especially like the B-Boys, you can't buy that in a store anywhere, right? So that's part of the experience, like the street show. And people like that about Honolulu. They like that about Waikiki, that you can go down and there's like someone, you know, B-Boying and somebody, the guys that are like painted gold and painted silver and all that kind of stuff. The thing is, later on I would learn that there's this, this group. It's basically a Waikiki business development group. Apparently what happens is a lot of people set up tables and sell things. There used to be International Marketplace and all these places that sold trinkets and souvenirs and toys and cool things about Hawaii. They would get upset because the peddlers would come in and they would sell their wares or their goods on a table and they wouldn't have to pay rent because that's illegal to peddle without a license. But the people that would actually pay rent, pay for the business license and pay all the things they got to pay and they were selling t-shirts and they were selling phone cases and they were selling all these wares and souvenirs and things about Hawaii and ukuleles and all that. So they would get upset and then they would complain. And so there was this business development group, the Waikiki business group essentially, that I don't know if they put in money, they each gave some money and then they lobbied the state of Hawaii to help them get rid of the peddlers because that made sense those people that were peddling out in front of the stores are taking business away from the stores. And those people in those stores pay like $10,000 a month in rent. Some of them pay $50,000 a month in rent. They're paying all this rent trying to do things right. And then these other dudes just show up, pop up a table and try to sell out in front of their store. And that wasn't fair. So they would get upset about that. So that means that we would get directions from the mayor's office to go and clean up the peddlers. And there's a lot of little tricky ins and outs to peddling. Like there's certain things you can and cannot do. You know, at first you would go in there and you tell them, hey, you got to pack up because you can't pedal. But then they would get smart and they'd be like, hey, I'm not peddling. I'm giving these things away for donations, which technically is not selling. Then the rules got changed so that the donations were not allowed. That donations is still essentially like taking payment, especially the ones that would name their donation. They'd say, hey, I'm not, I'm not selling these. I'm taking donations of $50 or whatever. The prosecutor still wanted to take those cases. So they would start arresting dudes that weren't compliant. And then eventually they would even get hip to it. And then they started doing things on the low, like sneaky. They were constantly watching out because HPD started sending in undercovers. And it sounds petty, but if a cop came, that person would just act like they weren't doing anything. If you were undercover, you could actually see what they were doing. And so in fourth watch, which is that short three month period after your FTO phase, your field training phase, 
when you and your class got to put on silly hats, your little outside outdoors hats, and you got to walk around Chinatown in Waikiki. Well, during my phase in Waikiki, I was voluntold to be one of the undercovers because I was a Haole guy and I looked like I was from off, like I looked like I could be a tourist. T local guys aren't going to come up to the guys that are making balloons or charging for you to look at the moon through their telescope or you know, were selling phone cases. They weren't going to sell to a local boy because they knew he didn't need that. He could go anywhere else. They only wanted to sell to tourists. So if you were a local boy, they were suspect that you were a cop. And so it kind of worked out for me because I was the white dude. I was one, I was like one of five white dudes in the class. On multiple occasions, I got to go plain clothes and go into Waikiki and try to buy things off of the peddlers and get violations from them. The violation was them telling me a price. So if they were selling like a drawing, like they're gonna draw me, then I would say, you know, how much is it? If they tell me $50, then now they're selling. And so if they thought you were a cop, they'd say, oh, donations, right? But sometimes if you put a dollar in the bucket, they'd be like, well, donations of $50. But typically what they did to be quick about it and be sly about it is they'd say, uh, typically people will donate $50 for a painting that size. You know, it's like, a, it's give and take. It's like a game you gotta play. I'm doing my game to get the violation. They're doing their game to avoid the violation. And I can't really do much until I get the violation. Yes, I'd probably get in trouble if I spent $50 of the department's money and then didn't get the violation. Like, what's the point? So there was money that I had to be given from the department that I would take a picture of and have to document serial numbers. And then once I got the violation, I would give them the money or whatever, and they'd usually put it in the box. And then whenever the violation was made, I would give a signal and then the, other, the white car and the other guys would come through. They would take all the equipment confiscate it and they'd take that money, they'd go through the money and they'd find my bill, which was the serial number had been marked and annotated and we had taken photos and then you would have to go to court. I really think the ticket's only like a hundred bucks, you know what I mean? Or at least the fine was only like a hundred bucks. But the idea was to disrupt and make it uncomfortable for them and make it hard for them to do that. They would discourage them from doing it. But at the time there might've been 20 peddlers doing different things. There was a dude who dressed up like Elmo and you would take pictures with kids. There was a dude who had a big telescope and he'd look at the moon and the stars and you'd pay him and you could look through his telescope and see all the different stars in the moon. There was someone who would paint like a impressionist painting of you. Um, there was someone who would make a cartoon that looked like you or some people would do like pencil sketches that looked really realistic. I remember once there was like pole dancers that were trying to do pole dancing street shows. That was awkward. There's a bunch of kids standing around. There was dudes out there with cards and they do little magic tricks, that kind of stuff. You can imagine. But there was dudes who were selling phone cases that had a bunch of merchandise, selling like Hawaii shirts and things like that. And if I had to give my opinion on where I think who these people were, they were typically all off island. They're all off islanders that came here, probably thinking they were gonna make a living in Hawaii, like they didn't have a plan, and then now they're out there peddling on the street. And that doesn't last really that long, to be honest with you, but they're trying to make some things happen. They could make a lot of money. Like I said, with the show I did with the B-Boys, there was six or seven of us. Let's say there was only six of us, and we each had 60 bucks at least, that's 360 for a night. But let's be honest, they probably didn't give me a full share because I just met them. So they're probably making 500 bucks a night. If you're selling stuff out there, you can make a killing. And a lot of them are selling like um, like tour guides. They'll be like, meet me over here and I'll take you through the waterfall and I'll tell you all about the area. Most of those guys are full of crap. They don't know what they're talking about. And they're usually not from Hawaii. In any case, that's what the peddling operations were about. And on numerous occasions, I would have, if I had to guess, maybe five or six occasions, I was the undercover officer and I would get the violation and they would come in and they would arrest the peddlers. And then they would confiscate their stuff they'd have to go to court to get it back. They never quit. They would get their stuff back, they'd go right back out there. A lot of times they'd change what they were doing. The one dude who had the telescope looking at the stars, two years later I saw him and he walked up to me in Waikiki and he was like, I had my kids, and like, do your kids wanna take a photo with Elmo? And he was dressed up like Elmo and I knew his voice, I knew who he was. So he was out there, he switched from the telescope guy to the Elmo guy. We thought maybe it would work, but I think a lot of it had to do with that business development co-op that was trying to get the peddlers off Kalakaua so that their businesses could thrive. Because they're trying to get people to come in and pay these high rents. So it's just a weird situation. It just reminded me of that because I never, I did see b-boys when I was out there doing my undercover stuff. But those guys were literally just had a hat out and you would dance and you'd throw money in the hat. They'd come around, they'd ask, if you if you want to support, this is the way to do it. If you could put some money in here, this is how we make our money. We're just students trying to make a living. 
blah, 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 blah. So that, that was actually legit donations. And so those guys never got in trouble. But just a blast from the past it was for me to have been one of the guys that was out there doing shows in Waikiki for donations when I first moved there, just for fun. I mean, I had a job. I ended up getting a job. So I was just doing it for fun because I liked to dance. And B-Boys love doing shows and dancing and all that good stuff. So that was just for fun. And that's all those guys were doing it for. I mean, I'm sure they were doing it to make a living. Think about it. If you're out there every night making, you know, three to $500, split it between your boys, like you can make a pretty good cash living if you're if you don't have a job i definitely never arrested any b-boys or dancers um i wouldn't have done that anyway because it wasn't a legit violation but it's just really weird from going from being the street performer to then arresting street performers right and i'm not gonna lie there was a little bit of a conflict felt a little weird but that's what the revised ordinances of hawaii said so they were violating those revised ordinances and it was my job to uphold those laws so it was just a trip all right here's the deal Peddling in the street without a license is illegal, according to the revised ordinances of Honolulu. But that doesn't change the fact that I couldn't forget where I came from. So yeah, it was like a conflict of interest. I had to do what I had to do. That's what the job paid me for. But I'm not going to lie and say that it didn't hurt. It was hard to arrest people that were doing what I had just done. I didn't know it was illegal when I was doing it, but it doesn't change the fact that that's how it is in Hawaii. You can't do that. And it's also something to think about when the business interests of Waikiki co-mingle with the law. Should it be illegal to sell things on the street? <sighs> but then you got to think about what about the local families that own some of those stores? The local people of Hawaii that work and own some of those stores on Kalakaua. Granted, not many. Most of them are mainland stores. But can't help but think about the people that pay their taxes, the people that pay their rent and keep their shops nice. And then other people who don't pay rent, don't pay taxes, don't pay for licenses, just set up shop in front of their stores. So I get it. I guess these are just things we all got to think about. Anyway, that's my story. It was a nice little trip down memory lane. I thought you'd enjoy. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate all the love, all the support. You guys have been great. And until the next time, enjoy some of these clips from that night. Aloha.
So I just want to give a shout out to all my people that have been supporting me and been active on the comment section and YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I do appreciate the support. And until the next time, aloha.